We can now make a projection in one of the two Georgia Senate runoffs. CNN will now project that Democrat Raphael Warnock is elected to the U.S. Senate. The pastor defeating Republican incumbent Kelly Loeffler. This puts Democrats halfway toward their goal of retaking control of the U.S. Senate. It now all comes down to who wins the other runoff. John Ossoff, who is currently in the lead, or incumbent Senator David Perdue. That is your headline. We are projecting that Raphael Warnock has been elected to the U.S. Senate. Now, the question becomes why and how and what does it mean for the other race? That takes us to John Berman. Uh, he came out early and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I represent everybody. It wasn't premature. No, he came out for good reason. He's now leading by 40,000 votes. There's more vote to be counted, which likely skews Democratic. Let's just talk about the historic nature of this, first of all. You have an African-American pastor being elected senator from an Old South state. That is historic in and of itself, and it puts now the Democrats one vote away from controlling the Senate. That Senate seat is uh, still up for grabs at this point. And this is breaking news. NBC News now projects Raphael Warnock as the winner in the special Georgia Senate election tonight. Raphael Warnock, the projected winner, beating incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler with a, at this point, 36,000 vote margin. The votes are still uh, now up to 40,000. The votes are still being counted in Georgia. Raphael Warnock is building that lead. Let's go straight to Steve Kornacki at the big board with the latest numbers. Steve Kornacki, what do we have? All right, Lauren. So what just happened that caused this race to be called for Raphael Warnock? And you can see the official call on our screen. We got another batch of votes from DeKalb County. We've been talking about DeKalb County. We didn't get all of the outstanding vote, but we got about 6,000 more votes. Remember, there were about 18,000 outstanding, so about a third of the remaining vote in DeKalb County, overwhelmingly de uh, de Democratic DeKalb County, just came in. Warnock won 91 percent of the new vote that just came in, so extremely Democratic vote that just came in. That what that does to Warnock's lead statewide is it pushes it over 40,000. It pushes it to a full point. Again, still more than 10,000 votes to come in DeKalb County. You can see the dramatic effect that these updates from DeKalb County are having. So Warnock still, there is vote to come from DeKalb County that, could, that will push that lead out further for him. There is still, as we said, 7,500 mail ballots to come from Fulton County. We expect that to also benefit Warnock, potentially votes in Chatham County, Savannah, the opportunity for him to build that lead north of 50,000. And putting it into a place, Lawrence, we were talking about this a little earlier, the decision desk is looking for, you know, does a candidate get to a place where there just is no realistic way that the opponent, the trailing candidate, can get back in it? And Warnock is putting this race in a position now where there's not a realistic path for Kelly Leffler. And also he's clear, critically, 50.5 to 49.5, a full point ahead. He seems clear right now of that 0.5 percent threshold that could trigger a, a runoff. If the margin between these two candidates was a half a point or less, that's recount territory. It's a full point and again, growing. It's a full point and growing. Press off the, press. the Fox News decision desk can now project that Georgia Democrat Raphael Warnock will unseat Republican Senator Kelly Loeffler, giving Democrats a 49th Senate seat and keeping alive Democratic hopes of taking control of the chamber, provided Warnock's Democrat colleague John Ossoff can defeat Republican David Perdue. The Perdue Ossoff race, as of right now, is still too close to call. All right, let's bring back in the panel. I want to get reaction all around. Judy, break it down. What does this mean? Big news. Well, I th this is this is a good night for President Biden. It's a good night for Democrats. We still have the second race uh, outstanding, but it looks as if Joe Biden is going to be in a better position to accomplish at least some of his agenda than he was at the beginning of today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Patterson. We are coming on the air with breaking news out of Georgia. NBC News now projects that Democrat Raphael Warnock has won the Senate runoff election, defeating incumbent Republican Kelly Loeffler and bringing the Democrats one step closer to winning control of the Senate. Georgia's other Senate runoff race between Republican incumbent David Perdue and Democrat John Ossoff remains too close to call at this hour. 
a victory by both Democrats would give Democrats 50 Senate seats. And with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris's tie-breaking vote, that would mean Democratic control of the Senate, a big advantage for President-elect Joe Biden in advancing his legislative agenda. Again, NBC News projects that Democrat Raphael Warnock has won the Senate runoff race in Georgia. More news on this NBC station and on NBC News now. I'm Steve Patterson in Los Angeles. Good evening, everyone. To, uh, say in the midst of all of this, all of this horrendous news that's going on here in Washington, something that none of us ever expected we would see in the nation's capital. I just want to make it official right now. CNN can now project that the Democrats uh, will be the majority in the uh, U.S. Senate. Uh, John Ossoff, the Democratic candidate in Georgia, he is defeating David Perdue, the Republican candidate. Uh, earlier, we projected that the Democrat Raphael Warnock uh, will beat uh, Kelly Loeffler, the Republican candidate. So it's 50-50 in the new U.S. Senate. Uh, but the new uh, vice president of the United States, uh, Kamala Harris, she will be, according to the Constitution, the president of the Senate, so she will break the ties. So the Democrats will be in the majority, the Republicans will be in the minority. Official John Ossoff, the Democrat, has won in the state of Georgia. Yeah, it feels like a long time ago, but only 24 hours ago, it was voters in Georgia, and both of those Senate seats are flipping. And, and it looked like a long shot for Democrats. Uh, they, they sat there at the end of election night, two seats short, but they won both of them in the state of Georgia. And it will give Democrats control of the Senate as of January 20th, when Biden and Harris are sworn in. Harris becomes the tie-breaking vote. And, and there's no small degree of irony in that, that the images of a storming of the Capitol, including the Senate chamber, today by Trump supporters, it will be Democrats in control of the Senate as well as the House, all of government, come January 20th. Rick Klein, thanks very much. Mary Bruce, that comes on January 20th when Joe Biden uh, is inaugurated. First item of business will be, it was supposed to be, uh, dealing with the pandemic. Of course, that will still be front and center. But these images today, these actions today, is going to change the tenor for this entire Congress as soon as it can mark the early days of the Biden presidency. Went uh, to the president-elect. We should note uh, some other major news taking place, uh, somewhat related to all this. Uh, NBC News uh, now projecting that John Ossoff, the Democrat, uh, will win the Senate runoff in the state of Georgia, and that uh, leads to the projection that Democrats will regain control of the U.S. Senate. It'll be a 50-50 split. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, Vice President-elect, uh, as Vice President, will have the tying. Uh, the uh, tie-breaking vote. So that just breaking here a few moments ago before we went uh, to Joe. All the alert from Atlanta, Georgia. Fox News can now confirm that John Ossoff, age 33, a first-time U.S. senator, will go to Washington after defeating David Perdue, the 71-year-old Republican who was seeking re-election in a razor-tight election, one that could still possibly go to a recount, Fox News projects that Ossoff will win that Georgia Senate seat. So Ossoff, along with Raphael Warnock's victory in the middle of the night over uh, Kelly Leffler, now enables the Democrats to go 2-0 and here in Georgia and now take a simple majority in the U.S. Senate with Kamala Harris breaking any ties at 50-50. to -50. This was, without a doubt, the worst-case scenario for the Republican Party over the past two months, going back to the election defeat of Donald Trump, to lose two seats in the Southeast in a state that has been relatively reliably conservative and Republican for 20 years. John Ossoff, the Democratic newcomer, will now be the youngest U.S. senator in history. The Democrat. That means the Democrats will take control of the U.S. Senate later this month. This was a seismic political event. This would typically be what we were talking about today, if not for the scenes of violence and chaos playing out uh, on the Capitol. But what very few people thought could be done was done mm -hmm. now twice. That Georgia flipped from red to blue for the first time since Clinton won it in 92. And then what some would argue was an even... even a longer shot to Democrats now, to unseated two Republican senators in what was once a ruby red state. Raphael Warnock, John Ossoff, now officially called in that race. And that will literally make the U.S. Senate 50 50, kind of symbolic for a divided country. And that makes 
in a few weeks from two weeks from now, uh, Kamala Harris, an extraordinarily consequential vice president, because she will have to, I assume, many times have to cast a deciding vote. A significant piece of political news at a Fox Business Alert is just into us. It's official now. The Fox News decision desk can officially project that the Democrat John Ossoff will defeat the Republican David Perdue here in Georgia. And that does now give the Democrats control of the United States Senate for the first time in six years. This completes a clean sweep of Washington for the Democrats. They already control the House and soon, of course, will occupy the White House. Fox earlier projected Democrat Raphael Warnock uh, would win his election, unseating the Republican Senator Kelly Leffler in the other Georgia runoffs. So now we have the victories by Warnock, Warnock, uh, Warnock and Ossoff. The Ossoff win is official, giving Democrats their 49th and 50th seats. When you work in the incoming Vice President Kamala Harris as a tie-breaking vote, she'll be the president of the Senate and poised to break the ties. The Democrats take control of the chamber, the balance of power in Washington. It's official. More from Washington and here in Atlanta in just a moment. Sí, José, felicidad. Les saludo desde Atlanta, Georgia. Pues sí, fíjate que justo detrás de este edificio, que es el Capitolio Estatal, hay una protesta. En realidad no es muy numerosa, pero sí en un momento se escucharon las sirenas de las patrullas que estaban pues tratando de asegurar el área. No está habiendo violencia por el momento. Simplemente hay personas que están apostadas frente al edificio estatal y que llevan, obviamente, algunos de ellos banderas en respaldo al presidente de los Estados. Estados Unidos están tratando también de mostrar su musculatura aquí en este estado, pero por el momento, repito, no son muchos los que están ahí. Yo calculo que habrá alrededor de unos 50, pero no pasan, no pasarían de 100, José, felicidad, los que están allí. Justo cuando después se ha anunciado que Jonasov ya se proyecta como ganador de la elección en contra de quien fuera el senador por Georgia, también David Burdú, un senador veterano que está todavía en cuarentena debido a que estuvo en contacto con una persona persona que tenía el COVID. Ahí están los resultados de esta elección especial. De este, bueno, esta no es la, espe la especial, esta es la elección regular. O sea que Osof estará seis años como senador una vez que esté confirmado y todo, José. Y antes se había confirmado también la victoria de Rafael Guarno, que él sí es el ganador de la elección especial, estará dos años como senador y, tendrá, y después tendrá que volver a reelegirse si es que quiere permanecer en ese cargo. Él derrotó a Kelly Loeffler y el Senado que haría de esta manera, José, con estos dos asientos eh, que van para los demócratas, quedarían 50 a 50. Entonces, ¿por qué es control del de Partido Demócrata? Pues simple y sencillamente porque el desempate en una votación lo tendría la presidenta hoy la vicepresidenta hoy electa Kamala Harris cuando ya sea obviamente confirmada en su cargo ella sería el desempate y es por eso que se dice que el control del Senado es para el Partido Demócrata ya no nada más el control del Senado José podemos decir que el control del Congreso porque también tienen el control de la uh -huh. Cámara de Representantes muy bien explicado mi querido Rogelio Monatagle desde Atlanta Georgia y vemos